It's time to say goodbye to old music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away. All while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Age of Jeremy. I am the leader in tax, investment, and business advice. Also, follow our podcast network, the Age of Radioverse, on Instagram at Age of Radioverse, 100 podcasts strong and growing. You can also check me out on TikTok at Age of Jeremy and Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q. If you want to be on this podcast and chat, email me at Jeremy.Quintanilla. That's J E R E M Y dot Quintanilla, Q U I N T A. N I L L A at age of radio.org. We are looking for small business owners and influencers to share their stories. Anybody really, no matter how small the story is, no matter how big the story is, we just love a good story. All right, let's get into today's podcast. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. You are listening to Age of Jeremy. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm the co founder of Age of Radio and 3T Fitness, and well, other businesses that I am working on. This podcast is about everything that I learn and the trials and tribulations it took to learn them. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started with some news. The first article comes from Coindesk Market Wrap Cryptocurrencies Tumble as Global Investors Reduce Risk. The crypto market was in a sea of red on Friday as Bitcoin. That was last Friday. This is being recorded on January 23rd. You're probably listening to it maybe on January 25th. Um, But last Friday on January 24th, First, uh, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, Bitcoin, tumbled more than 10% over the past 24 hours. It appears the global investors have entered the year with a reduced appetite for risk. And so the correlations between speculative assets such as cryptocurrencies and equities have increased, which results in widespread losses. Bitcoin is down roughly 40% from its all-time high of almost 69,000, while the S&P 500 is down about 7% from its peak, compared with a 10% drawdown in the NASDAQ 100 index. Alternative cryptocurrencies, also known as altcoins, led the way lower on Friday given their higher risk profile relative to Bitcoin. Ether, um, which is the coin for the Ethereum network, the world's second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, was down about 13% over the last 24 hours compared with a 14% drop in AVAX and a 16% 16 drop in FTM over that same period. Despite the losses, some analysts still foresee a short-term bounce. We expect BTC or Bitcoin to find a bid around the 35,000 mark, close to 50% from the top. In the short term, we can bounce to challenge the 45,000 to 50,000 zone, but the overall outlook remains bearish as liquidity remains tight. Punk Kajbalani, CEO of Delta Exchange, probably butchered his name. I suck at saying people's names no matter what language they're in or no matter where they're from. A crypto derivatives trading platform wrote in an email to Coindesk, um, um, sorry, the way that I had said that was that the uh, Pankaj Balani, the CEO of Delta Exchange, uh, wrote that um, piece that I just read to you, a quote that he expects the BTC to find a bid around the 35000 mark. Now, that being said, I actually think that Bitcoin is probably going to go down to about $30,000, um, but that's my personal opinion. I believe this is a correction. Um, I don't really think there's anything really as a bear or bull market. Markets just happen as people buy and sell stuff and their emotions get in the way of that. So if you are an advocate for the cryptocurrency market, I see no reason to sell um, because in the long term, they will continue to go up. So moving on, we're going to go over to a market watch uh, article by uh, Mark de Cambre. Is the market crashing? No. Here's what ha- what's happening to stocks, bonds as the Fed aims to end the days of easy money, um, analysts say. So what's happening with the stock market? Equity benchmarks are being substantially recalibrated from recalibrated from lofty heights as the economy heads into a new monetary policy regime in the battle against the pandemic and surging inflation. On top of that, doubts about the parts of the economy and events outside of the country, such as China-U.S. relations, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and Middle East unrest are also contributing to a bearish or pessimistic tone for investors. The confluence of uncertainties 
uncertainties has markets in or near a correction or headed for a bear market, which are terms that are used with more precision when talking about market declines. The recent drop in stocks, of course, is nothing new, but it may feel a bit unsettling for new investors and perhaps even some veterans. The NASDAQ composite entered correction last Wednesday, ringing up a fall of at least 10% from its recent November 19 peak, which meets the commonly used Wall Street definition for a correction. The NASDAQ composite last under correction March 8, 2021. On Friday, the NASDAQ composite stood over 14% below its November peak, and we're inching towards a so-called bear market, usually described by market technicians as a decline of at least at least 20% from a recent peak. Meanwhile, the blue chip Dow Industrial stood 6.89% beneath its January 4th all-time high, or 3.11 percentage points from a correction. As of Friday's close, while the S&P 500 was down 8.3% from its January 3rd record, putting in a mere 1.69 percentage points from entering a correction. Now, now, there is some great, more great stuff inside of that article. You can go ahead and check out that article. I have links to all of the articles in the episode description. But the point that I want to make with this is everybody just needs to calm the fuck down. Just chill out. Markets go up and markets go down. Things cannot go up forever. So much cash got flooded into this these freaking markets in 2020 and into 2021 that things are just settling and trying to find a balance. We have so many new investors going into, uh, so many new retail investors coming into this market. Cryptocurrency is trying to find its actual place inside of all of these markets. And with that, you are going to have things like this happen. It's also known as volatility. Now, Traditionally, when there is a bear market, you're going to see a decline of 20% from a recent peak. But when I said earlier that there's no really such thing as bears and bulls, there's people buying, selling stuff. That's exactly what's happening. People are just buying and selling stuff. People buy and sell off of emotion. And that's what causes these types of things to happen. But if you are good with a crypto project, if you're good with a stock company, if you're good with the future plan of those things, there is no reason to buy and or to sell those things if you already have them. If you do like some of these things, like I'm a big proponent of Microsoft, I'm a big proponent of Adobe, super big proponent of Stellar.org, uh, which is the company that, uh, or the, the nonprofit or the organization that generates lumens. I am a super big fan of those things. So why, when they go on sale, like they're going on right now because I can buy, you know, buy them at a, you know, a discount from what I think that they're actually worth. I'm going to go in and buy more. What a lot of people refer to as buying the dip. So if you are new to this, just chill out, go and research thing, continue to find good things that you want to invest in. Investing is for the long haul. It's not a day trading thing when you're looking to invest and build wealth through multiple, multiple generations. Just keep that in mind. So Again, all of these descriptions to, or all of these uh, episode links are in the description um, for the podcast. So that being said, what's the last article that we have? Well, I'm super excited about this because Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, which is the company that makes games like World of Warcraft, makes games like Cold um, or sorry, Call of Duty, makes uh, owns the company called King, which owns Candy Crush. This is positioning Microsoft in a very, very strong light. Now, that being said, when big companies do these types of buyouts, a lot of the times employees become pessimistic. But I found a really great article in Bloomberg um, called Activision Employees Say They Are Optimistic About Acquisition by Microsoft, which is a really, really good thing. So Activision Blizzard Inc. employees have had a range of differing and sometimes conflicting emotional responses to news based off of the purchase of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft Corp for for $69 billion. There, and that's again, 69 with a B, $69 billion. There has been trepidation about the potential layoffs, optimism about Microsoft's recent history of buying game companies and then leaving them alone, determination to fight for better wages and more worker protections. But above all, more than a dozen employees across Activision Blizzard's divisions say they are relieved that something, anything, has actually happened that could fundamentally change the the company's course. Many people have been worried that the status quo would remain intact, and that was unacceptable. Chief Executive Officer Babby Kotick and his management team have dodged scandal after scandal, starting with the California lawsuit last summer alleging sexual harassment and discrimination. After the Wall Street Journal reported in November that Kotick was aware of the bad behavior and even perpetrated some himself, 
the board publicly stood by him, leading to attrition and low morale across the video game publisher, which make games such as Call of Duty and Candy Crush, which I already said. Okay. So the further toward uh, Kotick empowered employees criticize and mock him on social media, which was unprecedented for the typically reserved video game industry. More than 1,800 of the company's 10,000 employees put their names on a petition calling for Kotick's resignation. But by the end of 2021, it seemed like this 31 year reign as CEO would continue, or his 31 year reign as CEO would continue. On Tuesday, every Everything changed. Once Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard closes, Kotick is expected to exit, and that is fantastic news. So, I am a huge fan of Microsoft. I was always a huge fan of Microsoft. I think Steve Ballmer did some things well. I think he did some things poorly. But ever since Satya Nadella has taken on the leadership of Microsoft, I cannot be more than happy with what Microsoft has done and where Microsoft is going. I am a big advocate for their business products. Obviously, we use Microsoft Office, Microsoft Teams, my Microsoft Project, all kinds of Microsoft stuff. Um, I'm also a big fan of their development or platform, such as Visual Studio. Uh, but from the retail side, I love their video games and um, I love or I love the Xbox and I love what they're trying to do with their purchase of Bethesda, their purchase of Activision Blizzard and creating like a streaming video game company to uh, really boost that beta, the, the streaming gaming platform, um, which they are going to dominate, in my opinion. Um, now, that being said, um, they do have a lot of work. Um, no one wants to have low morale at work. And if you really believe in the company and you've been with the company a long time and you have an, a, a, I'm not going to say he's an asshole because I don't know him, but Kotick um, as the CEO, I think it's time for him to get out of there. 31 years as a CEO, in my opinion, is a long time. I think CEO should be only allowed to be in place for about 15 and possibly 20 years and then the board and then they can move to a board position in oversight stuff but to have power of the day-to-day -day operations i mean that that's ridiculous for that long period of a time if you were in a publicly traded company now even from a family business standpoint if you have one family member that's in charge of it for that long new generations are coming they need to be they need to be groomed and they need to have their succession come at some point you have to let go of those reins and i think 15 to 20 years is a good time of running that specific company, depending obviously on what stage the company is, is in, but you can always be a CEO. You can always go move to a board and oversight it. And that's something that I don't think people think about. Anyways, that's not the point of that. I'm just happy of this. I heard the news last week. I was super stoked about it, posted it on Twitter and everywhere that I could. And I am really excited about where Microsoft is going. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we get back, we will jump into our interview. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. My guest today is Jackie Ruthier, and I'm probably saying her name wrong again, no matter what language it is, no matter how it's spelled, I will always say names wrong. I am not a very good, I guess, reader of names, but Jackie is one of the warriors from our 3T Warrior Academy that works with us at 3T Fitness. If you don't know what the 3T Warrior Academy is, it is a subscription service to our 3T Warrior community. We offer health, motivation, and generational wealth building knowledge all in one place. We have tons of classes on cryptocurrency. We have weekly video calls from Coach JV, where he brings on special speakers to talk to the community. We offer a private Discord. And as you will hear from Jackie, she helps run our thrice weekly Discord chat. You get discounts to our 3T events. There is all kinds of stuff 
And if you want to learn more about it, you can check it out at 3twarrior.com. You can also check out our free YouTube channels, 3T Warrior Academy and 3T Warrior Labs. If you want some dope crypto gear like our HODL shirt, H-O-D-L, um, and our HODL uh, zip up hoodie, which I just purchased myself, even though I own the company, I just bought it, whatever. I don't know. Maybe I'll give my money back. I don't know, but I'm getting the the actual zip up hoodie. Um, but if you want something fantastic like that, you can check it out at warrior labs or you can go to three T warrior.com three T warrior academy.com and then go to shop and check out our hodl shirt, all bull run shirt our bear run shirt. Cause we are going hard with clothing. So hopefully every time that I post something on the IG, you'll see me in the clothing, but that's enough about that. Back to Jackie. Jackie is part of our technical analysis team. She helps manage our crypto market exit strategies, what crypto projects we get involved with, and does one-on-ones with our warriors. She hails from Taylor, Arizona. If you've never heard of it, it's okay. Neither have Arizonans. She went to Northern Arizona University. Maybe you've heard of that. Served her mission with her church and somehow wound up at 3T Fitness. Let's find out how. Here is my conversation with Jackie. So, hey, Jackie. Hi. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Are you at the gym? I am at the gym. Were you there all day? No, I uh, I got here a little bit later. I had my morning call with Selman and I know uh, May was in town and then a couple of other people were going to be meeting here as well. Brenda and Figs. And so when a lot of people get here, uh, it's a little difficult to host a Zoom. Uh, it is super difficult. Yesterday yeah, was ridiculous. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, and again, we're going to just be talking about you. Uh, so to kind of kick that off, since um, my listeners have never really had people on the show before, you're probably like the third person that's ever been on this show. It's usually just me talking about crap. Um, I wanted Yay. to wanted to start by if you want to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about where you're from, where you went to college, what you did after college, and kind of how you winded up um, at Three T Fitness. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Jackie uh, Jackie Ruthier. I'm from um, Taylor, Arizona, um, Snowflake, Arizona. I think that's on the map. It's a really really small town. Um, born and raised there, grew up there, um, all the way till I graduated high school. Then I went off, uh, to college at NAU, Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, um, was there for two years studying biomedical science. Um, so I did two years study there. Then halfway through, I was kind of like, you know what? Um, I grew up in a bubble, grew up in a really small town. So I was like, I want to get out and kind of experience you know, a few more things, get a little experience under my belt. So I went and served a mission for my church in the Philippines. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that at all. That's cool. So did you have to learn Spanish to go there or Filipino? I learned Tagalog. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. So So they taught that to you in like your preparation to go to the Philippines. Um, so I was in a training center for six weeks. Um, I, you know, nobody can learn anything. They gave me a dictionary. And then after six weeks, they kicked me out, flew me over, um, over to the Philippines and said, good luck. So, right. (laughs) So honestly, yeah, I learned it just by, I mean, they say immerse yourself in the culture and, you know, they, they threw me out there to the wolves. So I literally had to like, it was kind of like survival. (laughs) So you can let, you can speak it still then I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can still communicate and go like I'm rusty. I mean, I've been back for almost five years now and yeah. I I don't have any Filipino friends in Arizona. So the mission was, uh, which is interesting because I have one of my best friends growing up is Filipina and she actually was Miss Asian Arizona back in 2014, I think it was. And she has, she's a really big cosplayer. I don't think she speaks it though, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I, I think her parents might have, I don't know if it translated down to to her at all but that's um, awesome yeah um and the only reason why i said spanish because i know that spanish was a highly speak like spoken language in the philippines or still is or was or something it has a lot of the language has a lot of spanish influence because right. of this, um they colonized over there right, during right, right. World War II. yeah mm-hmm. yeah one of um 
the only one of my favorite presidents is which no one likes except for me is William Howard Taft. And during that time before he was president, he was assigned over there. Um, and so he oh, wow. went, he was like our designated person during that period of time and during the Spanish war or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know enough about that part of it, but I know that he went over there during that specific time before his presidency. And when, it, when he went over there, it was Spanish speaking mainly. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, that is interesting. That's cool. So you did two, two full years. Um, for, for women, it's 18 months. Oh, got it. So, got it. Mm-hmm, six months shy. So that was, so that was, bef- but so you did, did you go back to college and after that, or you were done before uh-huh. you, were, okay. So you went back afterwards. Yeah. So afterwards I went back, finished up my two years, got that lovely certificate and I was on my way. And never yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's rough. I'm not going to lie. College is really rough. Yeah. I, I loved it. A great experience. Um, I think, yeah, everyone, you know, everyone should kind of get a little bit of a college experience. Um, but I mean, jumping into the, into what I do now, I kind of see different institutions in our, uh, you know, in our, in, in America for yeah. what they are. So yeah. now I'm kind yeah. of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you were there, um, what was the, the full degree in? It was in bio. Biomedical science was my full degree. Um, and then you started when you got it, when you came, when I met you, you were just getting a job in the biomedical field or you were looking I, for a job in the biomedical field and you, then you got one. Yeah, I was, um, gosh, when I met you, I was actually getting, I got a job working for ABLE. Um, which is an aerospace company. And I worked got in their it. chemistry lab. So got I, it, I, I took a lot of chemistry and things like that. I had a lot of labs in college. And so I worked in their chemistry lab for a little bit. Yet yeah, that's and not then, what you do now though, right? That is not what I do now. No. <laughs> okay. So, so what, so before we get into what you do now, how did mm-hmm. you, how did you get to 3T fitness? Cause that's how I met you. Cause that was in 2019. Yeah, 2019 is when I joined 3T. So that's that's a funny story too. Um, let's see, I had moved down after graduating. I had moved down um, right beginning of 2019 um, from Flagstaff to, to Mesa, um, which is where I currently live now. And I, I had gotten into fitness. Fitness was kind of like a big um, kind of new hobby of mine, working out and things like that. I, I grew up pretty overweight and chubby as a kid. I was a little chunk and, um, I always was into sports, but I always, you know, I just love food. So yeah, you, I know, don't, that's you don't have to, goes. you don't have to <laughs> tell me about that. I love food too. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. So when I was on my mission, I had lost a lot of weight and it was nice, you know, it was nice just being, um, smaller, being a girl, you know, everyone wants to look a certain yeah, way, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So So that was exciting. And um, I feel like women have a lot more pressure on them for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially, yeah, in America, you know, it's it's different. That was that was something interesting, you know, kind of that cultural difference as well. Um, Seeing that from the Filipino side, they they really idolize um, Americans and their, you know, how they look and and things like that. And so. So I kind of saw that from that perspective as well. And so we, we definitely get hard hit hard here with that kind of expectation to look a certain way. And yeah. so obviously like, obviously being at a young age and a woman, everyone kind of falls into that. And so kind of got into fitness um, just to look a certain way, but then I really kind of fell in love with it. Um, just, just because, just because it makes you feel good and makes you happy. So, um, so when I had moved, I had had a college roommate that had kind of gotten me into that, gotten me into, um, kind of researching more about nutrition and fitness and things like that. And then I really got into it because in college I had taken some, some fitness courses. And, and so I, I, you know, I was kind of gung ho about it. And so when I moved down here, I was looking for a gym, um, and I came across an ad, for 3T Fitness on Facebook. Yeah, was it a Facebook ad? There was a lot it of them. It was a Facebook ad. <laughs> yeah. That is how I got in here. Oh, sorry. Do we have a phone? There's, 
No, that's here at the gym. It's the gym's phone, right? Yeah. No, I was joking because we have that phone, but I don't think anybody ever answers. <laughs> oh, really? Should I just turn it off? Yeah. Who's calling? I'm going to keep this in the podcast, too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Just ignore it. That's a okay. Tom. That's a Tom thing, in my opinion. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tom's responsible for the phone. He'll see it later. He'll be like, "What happened? No one answered the phone." I know. I always forget, and then all of a sudden I hear a ring, and I'm like, well, "That sounds I, like I'll a be honest, I don't even know what the phone number is. I would have to look it up in our Cox oh, bill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, back to what you were saying. What were you saying? Um. So yeah, I gotten I gotten into um, fitness. So I oh the ads on Facebook. Seven. You saw the Facebook ads. Yeah, saw the ad on Facebook. Saw yeah. the ad on Facebook for three team. Was it um, one of John it. just talking to the camera, or do you remember which one? No, it was? I. It wasn't even John. It was a, it was an ad about a six week challenge. Got it. The six week challenge. It was that six week challenge yeah. ad, and it, it had caught me because because they were saying you could get. The, Six weeks, possibly for free. Right, right, right. Um, if you had, if you had beat the challenge. Yep. And so I was like, "Oh heck yeah! Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Get my six weeks for free." And because I just like that, I don't yeah. know incentive. And I was like, "Am I getting my money back?" You know, yeah, that's yeah. kind of how it was. Did it work? It it did. <laughs> or did you just put the money broke, towards it, the membership? What's that? So you beat the challenge, though, right? I was one pound shy of beating the challenge, but it roped me in. Yeah. Because you said you guys had that. Um, it would go towards a towards membership. the membership. Yeah, yeah. Towards the membership. And so it's funny yes. that you mentioned that because we don't talk about that a lot. But it was so weird for me and John during that time because mm. so Alex Ramosi is the guy that created a company called Gym Launch, and he's becoming kind of a, more of a bigger influencer now. And so the idea was to have this thing where you, to get people in, right, you have them do a challenge, which is a legitimate challenge to help them get their life back on track. Kind of like, I guess, similar to like our 120 day challenge now, but the 120 day challenge, I think is just better. But oh yeah, they do, they come in, you do the challenge. And then if you pass the challenge, then you would get your money back or you could put it towards your membership. And me and John are just so like... I don't know. Someone could probably come to us right now and be like, Hey, I can't afford your membership. Could I have a membership for free? And we'd probably be like, sure. Yeah. Why not? (laughs) Because we just want to help people. But I know that during that period of time, it was weird because it's almost like clickbaity to get people to come in, but it obviously worked. Um, so yes, well, that's, it's not actually what, what, what broke me in. So, so this is, this is the funny side of it because I going on Facebook there were a bunch of other little gyms that had the same Same thing thing going on. So I was me being who I am. I'm like, well, I'm going to go to all of these little gyms. I was a total gym whore. I was hopping around to these little gyms (laughs) doing these, doing these challenges. And I was like, I'm going to beat it and I'm going to get my money. (laughs) So I know. Isn't that funny? That is funny. That's really funny. And I, so, so I, I, at the time that I was at three T, I was at another gym doing, a, doing that is the same. funny. I did not know that. That is hilarious. Yeah. So what, what was the thing though? That other gym had all like every, every machine, everything you could think of. Right. Which we, we still don't have a leg three- press machine for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for that. Yeah, we'll get it one day. No, but here at Three T, I mean, all it all it was was dumbbells and kettlebells. So right, right, right. I was, yeah, and at the time, and so I had and at that other gym, I had beaten the challenge. But that's what I'm saying was, I mean, I had every reason to go to another gym, whatever. But that's exactly what had kept me here was was you guys. Oh, that's was, awesome. Yeah, because because I don't know, and and and, and I saw that I saw and, that uh, in you guys. Yeah, and obviously did something because it's just two years later, and you're still with or and uh, I'm 19, still 20, yeah, 20, 20, I almost still, three years later. I, I saw that in you guys. Like yeah. it wasn't it wasn't about and and I knew like a bunch of people were wanting their money back after the little challenge and everything like that. And JB was just like, yeah, here, go ahead, yeah. you know. 
And I saw that, that you guys weren't like that and that you guys had, yeah, no, no, you guys kind of had this thing about you where you had been, and I, I felt it too. And he had talked about it all the time yeah. that he had had a greater vision in mind and, you know, yeah. going further with something else. I never knew at the time what it was, but it was just like a, it was just like, I wanted to stick around and kind of see, see you what know? happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so interesting about the vision. So our vision for, from everything was just a simple mission statement that we created, like to help someone impact someone's life every day. Cause that the first business we, that we started was called JV impacts and it was just about helping people. Right. And so it's interesting that to move into the next kind of topic that it introduced everybody to cryptocurrency. Right, yeah. because that's what you essentially do for us as cryptocurrency for the most part, yeah. right? Um, so how so it's interesting because during that time I was working full time. John had found someone who talked to him about cryptocurrency. It might have been a warrior, I don't remember exactly who it was. And then he just went down the rabbit hole with cryptocurrency, and then it just got everybody, you know, I don't want to say obsessed, but like everybody got the concept that they could build generational wealth, right? And so right. Then you got into cryptocurrency from John. Then is that? I guess that's kind of what, what my next question is. Like, how did you get into cryptocurrency? Did it come from John, or how, what did that look like from your perspective when that was happening? Yeah. So yeah, it was from from being here, uh, being around JV um, uh, and Kevin and J Bills. J Bills was the was the member right. that was looking at cryptocurrency originally, and. And, you know, at that time I had been here probably almost a year and I was, I, I had grown a good relationship with JB and with Kevin and Jay Bills. And so we were all just sitting in the office one day and, and, and talking and, and then they introduced like what they had. And that was just when they had first gotten in, they were like, Hey, like, look at this exchange. And they told me to watch this video and kind of give my thoughts. And I was like, Oh yeah, I see that as totally being something of the future. And so then they talked about the crypto.com app and I immediately downloaded it and I jumped right in like the same thing, like the JV did. Um, I mean, we, we all kind of took our own little routes and I kind of took my route too and jumped in and just started looking into it. And, and then, so, and then you eventually built a strong enough portfolio where then you decided to prior to, kind of working with us and us giving you salary, you kind of started doing it full-time on your own? Yeah. So after um, jumping in and kind of seeing what crypto was all about and kind of what it offered and uh, just the possibilities are just so endless that it, it eventually came time. Like I, I was working and I was working my job full-time somewhere else and you know, on, after I would get home, like that'd be the first thing I'd just start researching things about crypto. And even then eventually, I think a lot of people can relate eventually on the job. That's all you're thinking about is like, what's, 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 what's going on? Right. Yeah. What's yeah, going yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's such a new space. And there's yeah, just, especially then when you start back in the 2020, I guess it would have been now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in yeah. 2020. Yeah. So, yeah. so then you would just start trading and then so yeah, eventually, eventually I was like, I'm, I'm wasting time at my job. Right. I, I could, yeah, I, I literally, that's, that's my frame of mind. I, think that I could be a greater investment of my time right. now. That That is literally a greater investment of my time now would be into this because right. it will benefit me so much more down the road. Yeah. And you have the resources mm -hmm. to do that, I guess. Yeah. 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 So when you were, so then how do you, when you were doing that, what kind of like, what were, what are the tools that you use to kind of make your trades and to do, you know, for someone who wanted to do like everyday trading in cryptocurrency, what would you recommend that they go research to learn about that or to do besides obviously joining the Academy, which we can talk about later, but like, right. as far as like, if someone who's not part of the Academy that just wants to go and learn about crypto apart from the Academy, what are the tools that you use to do your trading? Right. So how I learned, I just, I started off on YouTube. Honestly, YouTube was like the central hub of where I got most of my information. I just started following people, researching like crypto traders, things like that. And so once I kind of found um, some of the guys that I liked, um, 
that, that seemed authentic and like really, um, that, that outsourced me to every outsourced me to other things. So that outsourced me to trading view, which is where, you know, I get all my charts, charts right. all my indicators. Um, then that outsourced me to, um, a, a, a specific indicator, uh, source called market cipher, which another big influencer is crypto face. I know a lot of people have heard about him. He's pretty mainstream, but that, you know, that kind of got me into like the trading realm of things um, and learning about different exchanges and things like that. But then, you know, once you start to branch out and actually start using crypto related websites at the source, that's when you dive even deeper into like the actual information, searching for projects and, and things like that. So when you're searching, do you just start looking at the project first before you go and purchase the coin? Or do you look at like market indicators before, like you, do you like look at the charting and then you say, oh, this coin is doing a lot of this movement. I'm going to go research that project. Or do you go and search out projects and then kind of see what their coins doing from the market indic- indicating perspective? I would say I look at projects first. I, I look something that'll trigger me onto a project is, is partnerships or like someone or like a team, um, team members specifically that, you know, have been in the space for a while, or they came from a big organization or some type of company or something, you know? So when I hear that and it, it is the connection with a project, that's when I, I tend to jump on a project. Um, and, and dive into, you know, what, what its utility is. And then, and then I'll take it to the charts and see where it's at. Right. Um, and then make my investment off of that. Yeah. And so you're also really big into NFTs now too, then. Yeah. I, <laughs> with this sideways action, this kind of boring market that we've been seeing, I jumped right, right. into that. <laughs> I like to just, I know. I like, you know, I just like to dip my toes into everything. I, someone had asked me the other day, they're like, so what specifically? Like, I'm like, dang, I just, they were like, well, do you do this? I was like, yeah, I know a little bit about that. Do you do this? Yeah, I know a little bit about that. Like, I would say there's members on the team that are like, their niche is, their knowledge is way more than mine, you know, on that niche. But like, I just like to like jump around. (laughs) Right. So if like a a retail investor or a warrior from the Academy just kind of wanted to like get an overview of stuff you have access to be talk to them about most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> right. I could be comfortable in some areas, some areas more than others. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Cause like, I know like with, if we're talking about Mario who goes by the node defender now with Mario, yeah. he knows like everything about nodes. Like oh there is gosh. nothing that he doesn't know about nodes. It's ridiculous. Right. Like he, all of it. And so, but then like you give us all kinds of ideas about NFTs and the coins and when the target, um, I guess the, the price targets are going to be. Um, so is that, so kind of, I guess for people listening, what is it that you do for the warriors in the Academy or how is it that you work for us and what do you do for us with John and inside of the Academy? Okay. Inside the Academy. Um, I, I have a partner. His name's Selman. Um, obviously, you know Selman. Yeah, uh, I know for Selman. The listeners. But they don't know Selman. So Selman will be on here eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Selman, he lives in Germany. He does. Um, so we are, we make up, uh, I guess, like the technical analysis side. So that's yep. kind of our main focus. Um, and so we host Zoom calls on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, where. Uh, and those ones are just two warriors. Call. Sorry, those calls are just for warriors, right? Just for inside warriors, the yes. And so real quick, just for anybody who doesn't know, because I'm talking a lot more about it now that I'm full time with um, our academy, I guess, is that um, is that so a warrior is what we call someone who is a client of ours that is a subscriber to our 3T Warrior Academy. Um, so those Monday, Wednesday and Friday calls that you and Selman do for technical analysis, that is just for warriors inside of the academy. And that's like right, one of the right. benefits of being a warrior inside of the Academy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Oh, you're fine. Um, so yeah, we do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So that's where we analyze charts, you know, look at, um, projects that most, most of those warriors are going to be, um, invested into. And we kind of just give them, um, different scenarios of what, what price action will look like. Um, I also have kind of, d- dove into the NFT space. 
So I'm, one of my things that I'm starting to find is like kind of my niche. I just love finding new projects. That's kind of my big thing. Is yeah. Like, and that's I how just, I like, hear about new projects is when you find a new project. Yeah, <laughs> so I get, we go and I research that project. I too hyped on it because I'm just like, oh yeah, this is going to go off tomorrow. You know? <laughs> And then I disappoint myself the next day when I'm just like, well, yeah, but some of them do like, I mean, right. And that's what matters, right? You can't a hundred percent pick everything, but what matters is like, you know, you get some really big wins in there to offset any of the ones that weren't winners. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so what are some of your favorite NFT projects? Some of my favorite NFT projects, um, that we, that are kind of more well-known that we've gotten into um, gambling apes is yep. one that one deals with, um, you know, kind of the metaverse, if that's kind of a new topic. Yeah. A topic that no uh, one knows anything about. Yeah, or really nobody really knows about. Or... I know. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like when I start discussing some of this stuff, people are going to be like, what the heck is she talking about? No, no, I, mean, I'm, I don't know. What my listener, that is one of the things that I'm going to really focus on this year is trying to pinpoint my listeners. Um, but yeah. um, because this podcast has been so like inconsistent because of working full time. And then obviously I'm not going to do this if I need to do something for three T Academy or for one of the other businesses that John and I have, or that John's opening that he's, that I'm CFOing. Right. Um, so eventually we'll find out, but I'm assuming that no one really knows what the metaverse is. Um, but, uh, so the gambling apes and as you buy the, the ape NFT and it gives you access to get sh- profit sharing from their metaverse casinos. Is that essentially right. what happens? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool so that's one um kind of for the like residual aspect and that's in john's income. portfolio right yep yeah, that's in john's it. portfolio as yeah. well and then um, we i think we have some in our fund i don't remember they antonio yeah, deals with that I think, we do. Do. I think we do i think i remember talking to mario about that yeah. um one of the bigger ones that i am um more excited about is it's on the xrp ledger it's called Board Apes XRP Club. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. I know it's the, the name is pretty funny. Um, but this, this one is a little more exciting just because it is more, I, I got into it a little earlier than, um, than most other projects yeah. at, at time, well, at I, the time being. I would say that's the benefit of having you and Selman on the team or, or for the people that are warriors in the academy is because you find stuff way before anything is even known to anybody else. So like <laughs> if people act on a lot of these things and take that initial first step risk, like that's one of the biggest benefits to the stuff that you find is because you guys do it so much and so early that when you get it and it's a winner, it's a big win. Yeah. 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 So what is the benefit of the board ape XRP club? Wait, no, what is it called? Board. What is it called? Board apes XRP. club. Okay. So I said board apes XRP. club. Yeah, you got got it. it. I know it's a pretty long title. Yeah. Um, this one, this one I'm excited about because nothing, nothing has been minted yet on, um, XRP ledger, um, which means the physical, which means like the digital NFT is not, not even um, in process yet. So basically it's just tokenized right now. Um, so I'm excited about that one because, you know, it's not even mainstream yet. So that's, that's cool. That's why. Cool. Nice. So what do you yeah. do? So you also manage the target. So one of the things that makes what you do so important or for the Academy so important is that we allow for exit strategy and target price points for exiting certain amounts of uh, someone's coin inside of their portfolio and you and Selman come up with those exit points or do you just come up with the exit points or how does that piece work from your side? Yeah, we both, we both, um, a- any, any trader is going to have different targets, right. um, depending on how they hold different indicators and things like that. So, um, what I do is if I, if I, um, if I have a project that I I really strongly believe in, I kind of take the possibility. I look at market cap. That's kind of my biggest thing. So I take the possibility of what um, the market cap could be. um, And then kind of base my exit targets off of that. If it's a project that um, I'm not looking to hold longer term, it's something that I'm just kind of doing a swing trade off of. 
I'll use indicators, um, chart indicators like Fibonacci um, retracements and extension levels and things like that to help me um, place targets and exit targets. That's awesome. So it's really interesting too, and not to get like get completely off topic. I just think it's interesting because you know so much about technical analysis and you learned <laughs> it in such a small amount of time. Like, did you read books on it or just watch YouTube or like, was it practicing? Cause you also do leverage, you did leverage trading or still do leverage trading, right? I did do leverage trading for a little bit. Um, after, after kind of getting wrecked a little bit on that, I definitely scaled that down. Um, and right. if I ever do do a leverage trade, I make sure it is, um, that you can fully cover it or uh, yeah, 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 that it is right. a much more responsible. So that, that was, you know, that's kind of the thing. I, when I, I don't know, I don't know why that's kind of my personality, I guess I'm like an all in or all out. So I was like, oh man, leverage trading, you know? So I just jumped. I right, just right. jumped in. Um, well, too, and that- leverage trading is a lot different in the crypto space because you can leverage so much more of it. Like I can like do 100% leverage on my BitTru account or something ridiculous. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then like I have a TD Ameritrade account and I can only do like, I don't know, 30% of it or something along those lines. So the leverage, but it does, if you can handle the, I guess the, the stress of it, and that's something that you could do on a daily basis. You can make really good money with leverage trading. You yeah. can make, yeah, you can make insanely Same good money amount, leverage right. trading. Yeah. You can also lose insanely. Oh, insanely amount <laughs> <laughs> leverage yeah. trading. I guess that that's kind of the the thing. Yeah. Um, so, bef- yeah, that's what that, that it keeps it kept me in check and kind of you know I had to refocus and be like, okay, you know, it's not worth it. Right. It's not worth the stress, in my opinion. Well, yeah, I know um, when John was doing it, it was like his whole life like kind of evolved around making sure that everything was going well inside of the trade, right? right or, yeah, yeah. Right. So, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, before I talk about, because um, I want to talk a little bit about your gyms with Jackie or Jackie's gyms, because that's a big part of the academy. Um, but to go back real quick, uh, so you guys do the three videos inside of the academy monday wednesday friday but then you also run the discord yeah we both um we both are pretty uh we're mm, kind of lately i haven't been as active as i should be but yeah we someone knows a lot more about the discord yeah and he does a lot of stuff with bots too inside of the discord because i think we buy a lot of bots bots. so it can be automatic but do we so do you guys talk or do anything inside of the free discord um, or is it not just much a member the free Discord. Discord. I do. I post. I'll post specific trades in the Discord for the Warriors. Right. Mm-hmm. And then answer questions um, in like the general chat and stuff like that. For the for the free one, I'm not super active in that one. I'm not either, so that's why I was asking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's hard too because like with everything that's going on, like I tried. If I was to do something, it would be in Mighty Networks probably. Um, yeah. just to talk to people and encourage them with the 120 day challenge. Cause that's going on right, right. now. Um, but yeah, it, that's it probably is where hard I would too. You know, you're getting messages off on the side, yeah. like outside of like in, in, in individual DMs. And then, you know, then you're focusing on posting for the people, you know, within the Academy. And then, yeah. so I, yeah, I could definitely work on being more active in there, but it is, it is difficult. <laughs> so what are your favorite uh, exchanges for people? Like if someone wanted to get involved with crypto, I like, I love crypto.com. For some reason, I have a Coinbase pro account for some weird reason. Um, I actually like the DeFi, like the, the swapping a lot better just because of the ability for people to create their own liquidity in those types of environments. But um, if someone was just to do an exchange, what exchange do you recommend? If someone's just starting out, I I always tell people um, to kind of, I always tell people to first figure out what type of investor they want to be. You know, if they're going to really dedicate themselves to it and they want this to kind of be like their their life job yeah yeah their life then you can use more active like spot trading exchanges if you just want to invest and kind of hold um yeah for a longer term i love crypto.com yeah. that's 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 the one for that if you want to be more active in trading um i would say um kraken or uh, KuCoin. I love yeah. KuCoin. KuCoin, actually, when you got me onto KuCoin, the, there was a reason why I didn't start using it, but remember when I sent you that you, like text out one day, I was like, hey, do you oh, have yeah, a code? Yeah, yeah. And then I didn't hear back from you, so I just signed up anyway. And then I was like, oh, well, she got back to me. Now she doesn't get the 
benefit of me signing oh, up. No. But <laughs> um, but I didn't do any trades with it. I forgot what the reason was. But I would say KuCoin had most of the better tools out of most of them that I had seen if you were going to be an active trader. Yeah. The, the reason why I like KuCoin is because more, I mean, exchanges like Kraken, Coinbase, um, Crypto.com, Binance, um, you know, they're a little more stingy, I guess you'd say, when they list a project. Um, they like to have the project typically when it's listed is like later on KuCoin. The reason why I like KuCoin so much is because you can get in on a project pretty early. Right. Usually projects will get listed there a lot quicker than they will on more. Um, yeah. On bigger exchanges like those other ones. So that's why I like it because you have, you know, a big diversification of assets. Yeah. No, absolutely. I would agree with that 100%. Um, so with, uh, with, with inside of the Academy, you also have something called Jackie's gems or what is that? Or gems yeah, with Jackie. So- I'm calling this podcast gems <laughs> with Jackie. And just so you know, Josh made a badass thumbnail. I don't know if he showed it to you. Oh, so no, Josh yes. made a cool thumbnail for it. Like I had him put a thumbnail for this episode together so I can make a clip yeah. of it and put it on Instagram. And he did a fantastic job. But um, so what is cool. Jackie's gems? Jackie gems. So we came up with that. Um, and that's just because that is kind of the thing I really like to do is find new projects. So yeah. that's what it is. So in, in crypto, you'll hear that, um, that a project is a gem and yep. it's something that you kind of get in early in on and, um, and you know, it's going to stick around and be valuable in the future. And so that's, that's kind of, that's why, that's why we came up with that because I like to bring new projects. Um, I was doing it on a weekly basis now, when you say you're um, doing it on a projects. weekly basis, was it just something that you posted inside of Mighty Networks? or? And just so everybody knows, when you join the Academy, you get an access to our private Mighty Networks, which is like the Academy where there's courses and a bunch of stuff. But so do you, did, was it inside of Mighty Networks and that you would post that? Or was it a video? I would, it, was in, it was in Discord and it was on Got it. Um, the, one of those live streams on Fridays. It was on the live streams with between Selman and I. Yeah. And the light, our live stream, your guys' live streams are through discord. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then what's one so, of, so just for one, just one, what is one of your gems that you talk about right now? One of my gems I absolutely love is, um, Rose. The ticker is R O S E Rose. Um, okay. that is Oasis network. I called that one. Uh, I think it was around nine cents. Currently it's at like, I touched 59. So just, just shy of 60. So that I'm is pretty huge. Proud of that That's one. a really big gem right there from nine cents to I, 59. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was proud of that one. I was proud of that one. Still, so, it's, well, so what's it's Oasis helped. though? Oasis is, so they are a layer one um, blockchain. They are, their specific niche is um, privacy and tokenized data. And that's, okay. that's like the big thing that I really love about, um, about the project okay. is because I'm all gung ho for, you know, power to the people and yeah. things like that. And, and so the tokenized data, that was just such an interesting kind of solve in my opinion, because, you know, all these big hubs, Amazon, and, um, you know, they all, they all take, take our, data our data and so use it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a super yeah. advocate for that. And so just so everybody knows, that wasn't like planned because I talk about that all the time on oh, my, the you? podcast. Yeah, not so I hate the fact that companies yeah. use our now me personally. Here, here, here's my personal opinion. Me personally, I don't care because it's easier for me with all the shit that I have going on in the world for me to pick up my phone. And if an ad shows up of something that I would like to buy, it knows me better than I know myself. So I personally don't give a crap about it because they can share that stuff as freely as they want because in the end it's going to come back to me and it's going to show me something that I don't have time to go and learn about myself. And then I can be like, Oh, I I do like that. I do buy that. You know enough about me. I can make that assessment, but that's not how the whole world is. Right. And so people are people that aren't that way one. And then two people that maybe you're in a, um, a bad financial situation. All of these companies are getting their data and making billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars off of it. So if there is a way for those people to get access to some of that money, which they deserve, right? Because mm-hmm. it's their, it's their life that people are profiting from, right? They should be able to 
have the opportunity to either opt out for that or to get paid for it. And so it yeah. sounds like Oasis is kind of solving some of that problem. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. Yep. It, yeah, it puts people in control of their own data. And so if they tokenize their own data, yep. they can, you know, freely give it to a company yep. and, and get paid for it. You know? yep, and that's how it actually should be. So I think that that's yeah. awesome. And that is a huge, huge project. And I think it being at 50, it's at 59 cents, you said? It is right now. Let me check the chart because I have it. <laughs> I think right now it is at, let's say 48. Let me see. Let me right. Because everything's going down. Because I think last time I saw Ethereum, it was like 2,800. Yeah, everything everything took a little dip. Oh, 38, right? 38. So it's it's falling, but at its peak, it hit 59. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the level yeah, off at 38 is still really, really good from nine cents when you started talking about it. Yes. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, but yeah, so that that's really cool. So I think that that's a great project. Um, so then then the next thing to kind of move away. Well, okay, before we move to the other next question that I want to ask. So you do do you do you have private clients that can reach out to you for help? outside of the academy do you like do anything for people like your own aside thing for yourself or is it just stuff that you do in the academy yeah so when i when i first started i was doing that i kind of had a couple of friends that were like well i don't have time for this like i'll pay you to right. handle a portfolio for me and so i did that for a little bit um and then it's it's kind of stressful because i think when people first get into crypto they expect now 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 and it was well, that's a little bit really like, how it was in 2020 and into the 2021. Right. So yeah, yeah, and that's it was, like, yeah. it was. Yeah. And, and so it, you know, it was good, but it, it kind of became a little tedious when, I don't know, like when, when things would pull back a little bit, I mean, it's a market. For goodness sake. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just gonna like gonna any other market is going to go up and go down based off of what people can exactly. buy and sell. And, sell (laughs) exactly exactly so you know people kind of people kind of lose their minds when things don't go up forever they get a little emotional about it so i mean for me it was just a little much to have to deal with that with you know outside of the academy just with with other right right so so i was like "Eh, it's not really worth it that much so now now i just handle family investments on on a more you know personal level outside of the academy so. And then, but people inside of the academy, they can do a one-on-one with you. Yeah, people inside the academy can. Yeah, they can. Schedule and you've had a few of them. I think you might have had one recently, or have one recently. Yeah, someone. Yeah, someone just said sign up with me. Cool. Um, for Monday. So, so during that, it, do they honestly, just ask you any question? It's just your guys' it's time for them to pick your brain, or is that how yeah, that works? Yeah, yeah, they can. They can you know, kind of go over their portfolios, ask us any questions regarding their portfolio, um, different new investments. That's something I like to do is, um, you know, if they have any questions on new investments, I like to kind of present some new things that I'm looking at. And then afterwards, something that I've been doing um, after the first couple of calls that I've had, you know, I just, I just feel like if they're paying for that time, I'm like, well, I want to like write out a breakdown sheet. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I, I like to like include everything that we kind of went over and then some other things for them to look into. Cause it's, it's, it's like basics, you know, it's not yeah. anything super secretive or super special that I, that I came up with on my own, but it's like yeah. basic sources that they can look at and refer to, to kind of, you know, get them on their way to, to do their own thing. So yeah, no, absolutely. So I'll send that in an email after, after the one-on-one and then Tell them to kind of email me back with any suggestions or feedback. That's really, really cool. That's really cool that you do that. I didn't know you did that part. Uh, I mean, I guess it makes sense to do that part. But like <laughs> when I thought about it, I was like, oh, I didn't know she did that. That's cool. But you also, so to get to, to the one of the last questions that I have for you, because um, I think it's interesting because I know originally you wanted us to kind of put you in like doing nutrition and things like that. So you're really into nutrition, even though you really like to eat. Cause I'm in a nutrition yeah. chat with you where everybody's always chatting about nutrition and I have nothing, I have nothing positive to say in the chat because I, I love food so much. Like, I don't want to eat that. I want to eat pizza. <laughs> um, so, right. but you really like nutrition then like that's, I mean, besides the fact that you really like eating, right. Cause I love yeah. eating. So, um, but, uh, so like, do you, so in that group chat that you have any warrior can join that chat that we have. Yeah, anywhere you can join that. I've actually had when we started this 120 day challenge, 
um, you know, which is all, all fitness, nutrition, getting your mindset right. Um, I had quite a few warriors, I would say almost 10 probably reach out to me for like a specific nutrition plan where I, I don't, I don't firmly believe in macros. I, you yep. know, I think it's too tedious. I think it's too stressful for people. Oh, it's super stressful. I'm trying um, to do macros right now and it drives me crazy. Yeah. I don't, I mean, my, my big thing is I believe in, you know, calories in calories out and then sufficient amount of protein. That's it. That's yep. all I, that's all I tell them. So I kind of build out a plan based off of that. And then I tell them to focus on high volume, low calorie meals. So because I know myself, I, I kind of self-evaluated and figured out that that's, that's who I am. You know, I kind of, I'm, I, my eyes are bigger than my stomach when it comes to eating. And so I, I stick to really, um, big meals, but they're low in calorie, but there's a lot of, a lot of food. It's like, if you were to like eating a ginormous salad that's right, low calorie right. but high like food volume i guess yeah <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that's really cool well cool that's everything that i kind of wanted to go over with you we can definitely get you back on and we can deep dive into other stuff too in the future um always yeah, looking for that. more guests and definitely always want to give information um so is there anything that you want to add on or say yeah, I'm, I'm. Thank you so much for having me. I'm oh, glad. yeah, of I've course. Never, I've never been on a podcast with anyone that's <laughs> yeah. ever wanted me on a podcast. So I really well, appreciate that. No, I think you have a lot of information and you have a great personality. So I think people will love it. Mm-hmm. One, because people love you. Um, and two, I'm definitely <laughs> trying to get more of the academy background people out on, you know, to the public, I guess. Because um, you're also going to be when John, um, and not to, give other information but if john ever goes on like a vacation or something um you guys are going to be doing stuff on the youtube channel yeah yeah so i think that, i think that'd be really I'm good so i'm really excited for that so thank you so much for being on i appreciate it and we mm-hmm. will i have i think on the next one i'm going to try to get johnny and johnny crypto and antonio on this and then i think after that i have all of Johnny abs and Mario. And then I'm going to do one with Mario. And then I'm going to try to branch out from outside of the Academy and then get Selman in here. But in the, between that, I'll probably start doing more interviews besides just one a week. So we can definitely try to get you back on in the midst of that and see what's going on and see what other new projects you have. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. That does it for today's podcast. Thank you all so much for spending time with me today. We will be working to have interviews as much as possible. Again, if you want to be on this podcast, reach out to me at jeremy.quintania at ageofradio.org. Don't worry, it's free for everyone. Also, please make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast. And remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. See you next time. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcatcher. If you can do me a favor, please rate this podcast if your podcatcher allows you to. Talk to you soon.